Okay, I have to pick up where I left off because the video just cut out because I guess I ran out of space or something. I'll have to worry about the battery here pretty soon. I'm now uploading the first video up to YouTube and it's saying this will take 389 minutes. Oh well. I won't be able to probably list it the, as soon as I wanted to. But anyway, this is who I was on to face, or I think that's what his name was. Not too sure. <coughs> His shield flies off when you when you spin him. That's why I had to reattach it. Oh, it just flew off again. It's over here. My fisto. Okay, let me put that back on. Now we're at Evil Lynn. Um, I meant to say this before about Tila. Tila, uh, you may have seen her in pictures, uh, the figure anyway, um, where she has snake, uh, like a cobra around her um, neck and body. It's like a body... Uh, armor, uh, one around her waist and then around her neck. Um, I don't have that. I don't think it ever came with that. Same thing. Um, I always thought it was odd that you know snakes are bad or whatever, and Snake Mountain is the bad guys hideout. But she had a cobra right there, and then she had a cobra around her neck. But like I said, I don't think mine came with one, and I don't think that maybe it was when they reissued Tila out that that's when they added that armor. I could be wrong. I don't remember having that. Evelyn, I don't think she had armor either. But she had a wrist out like this. That doesn't mean anything. But I, she might have had a shield. If she did, she doesn't anymore. She does have her evil crystal ball scepter. Um, she was the one, like I said, that had marks on her. Um, on the back of her thigh and all over her back. Um, and on the front of her inner thighs and uh, near her knee right there. Um, so it, it was easier for that to show up because uh, her skin was yellow, jaundish, jaunda, jaundice-ish. <laughs> uh, that's not a word. But uh, anyway, yeah, so there she is. Her, hit, or her uh, waist still has the punching action, just like Tila. Uh, now down to the next thing. I believe that this guy... Uh, Wow, what was his name? Leatherhead, Leatherface? No, that's a turtle character. Anyway, he's starting to rip right there, the rubber. So just be careful. But for the most part, he's still intact, and his rubber tail is pretty cool. He was Whiplash. Yeah, that was what his name was, because he would whip you with his tail. And he had this long kind of spear thing. Um, and a very ugly face. But anyway, his... Uh, He's got some dirt on his chin or something like that. And he's got the mark on his back, like I said, because he had the dark things. Uh, dark claw, shoe, boot things. Anyway, he has uh, marks on his back. Uh, where I said his name. Cobra Khan was one of the original Hiss men. You don't find that out until later in the, in the comics that came with the figures or whatever. But uh, his former master was King Hiss, who is right here. There was two other snake men. Uh, he was the king of the snake men in the past. Um, there was two other snake men. There was a guy with a head that he kind of like, the head just like popped out when you hit a thing on the back. And then another guy, he was like Rattler, I think his name was. And he had a tongue that would just kind of lash out. So maybe his name was Lasher. I can't remember. Anyway, I don't have those two characters. They were really colorful, and they were snake men, and I wanted them, but I got the the dinosaur figures instead. But here's uh, Cobra Khan. He has spraying action, too, so he would spray people, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, he still has his weapon and everything. Uh, he has black on the bottom of his feet, because I covered up before I said his name. Uh, before King Hiss came out, though, um, let me talk about King Hiss. There was Hordak, and I have most all of those, and I'll show you that later. But first, King Hiss had uh, Break Apart Armor. He had a snake scepter here. Um, and his arms would turn into snakes when he molted, and his body would turn into snakes. You gotta be really careful, though. You gotta peel it. His, his skin armor um, all around. You can't just try to pull at it from one point. 
because there's a lot of different attachment or there's a lot of different connecting points for it. But here he is, and but this is what the real King Hiss looks like. Dun, 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 dun. He's trying to come apart. He's molting. It's hard to do with one hand, sorry. I don't want to break it. But there he is. He's got his main King Hiss head and three other little snakes around his body. It's nuts. Anyway, so that's who King Hiss is. He was the king of the snake men, and he came from the past. Before Skeletor even existed, he was the bad guy for Eternia. Probably before Eternia existed, I think, in, according to the comics. I can't remember exactly. But that was him. Uh, but let's move on to Hordak. Hordak was a guy, I guess he existed before Skeletor too, but he would be in between the time of King Hiss and Skeletor. He kind of went alongside, and... They kind of, like, were going to put him in the cartoon for He-Man, but then they ended up putting him in... He ended up being the bad guy for She-Ra. And no, I don't have any She-Ra figures. There was ponies and crazy um, uh, Gwildor slash Orko looking character, but uh, I, I liked She-Ra, the cartoon, but by that point, He-Man was kind of on the way out, for me anyway. And, um, you know, so I... I don't have any Shiva toys, so don't ask. Yeah, don't tell. Uh, but anyway, uh, before I get on to that, here's Battle Bones. This came out around the same time that Dragon Master uh, Skeletor did. Of course, dinosaurs were starting to get cool in the 80s, so they had um, this. This was meant to be, you know, you would put your character in here. It was meant to be a carrying thing. You would pick it up by this handle, and you'd put the figure's weapons in here, and that would close shut. Uh, I thought that there was two different versions of these. I could be wrong, but this one was the first one. The other version, I think, was either glow-in-the-dark or it was like a darker color or purple or something like that. It was like a bad guy one. The comic for this made it out to be like this was like an ancient um, dinosaur dragon thing uh, from Eternia's past, but yet its spirit was still in there even though it had no flesh. It had its bones. And um, it was being enslaved by Skeletor, but then later on he befriended He-Man, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, so, but that's what kind of led up to the King Hiss story, I think. Because they talked, they started to talk about dinosaurs or whatever. But it came out around the same time as Dragon Master Skeletor, which is my favorite Skeletor. But anyway, um, <clears throat> here we are. We're at Hordak's Lair. Uh, there are some broken parts here. This right here is broken so it doesn't fit in there right. Um, and this right here that holds this up is broken. <laughs> so, but it still somewhat works. This was meant to be like a dungeon or a cage or something like that. And you flick this thing, and it was supposed to swing open like a door. But instead, it just kind of flies off and breaks. Um, this was kind of harder to assemble, and you couldn't fold it up like um, Castle Grayskull or or uh, Snake Mountain, so don't expect it to be like that. Um, I don't want to show you how to disassemble it or whatever, but there's the clasp on both sides, and then there's the center piece that it attaches to, and here's this. you got to attach... Wow, it is really dark back here. I'm sorry. Um, you got to attach this and kind of swing it in together on these little tabs here. Uh, not much in the back, because like I said, it wasn't meant to be like an open up thing. Uh, Snake Mountain had really interesting front faces, and Castle Grayskull had a front face good. Back face was kind of boring. This just doesn't have a back at all. But from the back though, you can operate this tree that grabs people. Now let me just back up so you can see. It would grip the guy and then it could land him in this trap. And this trap right here, I don't know if this is broken or whatever either, it still works somewhat, but not like it used to. I think the idea was you were supposed to step the figure's figure uh, foot in there, and then it would just close in on it. Because it would trap you for this monster that would come out of the hole. Now here's the monster. It was this rubber puppet. It is very frayed. I don't know what happened. I tried to tape it back together, and... I think that just kind of made matters worse. Uh, you'd need a pretty small hand to fit that in there. 
Uh, if your hand is too big, it's going to rip it apart. I would show you what it would be like, but basically you stick your hand in there and work it like a puppet, and you would grab the character and pull it back in. Um, so that's that. That's the Hordax lair. I don't think that there was much else to that. Um, here's the evil Hordak. He has his white crossbow. Uh, they all came with crossbows, pretty much. Uh, I think I have all the Hordak characters. That Roadster guy that I was talking about when I was talking about Extendor right there. He was his enemy. He had the wheel on his chest or on his stomach or whatever, and he zipped across the floor. I don't have him. I think he was a part of the evil Hordak, but uh, the evil Horde or whatever. This was uh, Man 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 Mantana, I think his name was, but he had like antenna eyes. Ooh. Um, he didn't have swinging hips or a uh, waist, which I thought was odd, but that was him. Um, and he has a gray crossbow. He has a green crossbow. I think his name was Grizzlor or something like that. He's kind of hairy. He's nothing special. Looks kind of like a gremlin. This guy is, a, he's got like a suction cup for a mouth. And what you would do is you would press this thing on the back. It would suck in. And then, let me move his arms down and do this. And he could suck onto flat surfaces. Um, this isn't working out too well. Great. Now this is making a liar out of me. I just tested this earlier, and it was working. So let me try to hold this in my left hand and do this. Okay, now he's attaching. But yeah, it's like a suction cup. He's like a leech. His hands are suction cups, too. Uh, they don't work quite as well or whatever. And his feet are suction cups, too. I think his name was, like, Leech Man or The Leech or something like that. But he's pretty terrifying. Uh, Hordak has a cape. The cape is kind of taped on from the bottom, I think, because uh, it kept ripping off the armor. The armor on that, I think, is broken, but um, it still attaches. Oh, speaking of broken, the tree had parts fall off it. I still have the thing, but it was all hollow, so there was a part that went there and another part that went somewhere else that broke off, so those are there. And uh, here's Modulock. He might have a, a missing piece or two, but not like it mattered because they, they gave you extra like tie-in pieces. But you could disassemble Modulock, even his weapon, and reassemble him however you wanted. And I remember the commercial for him was Modulock, Modulock. It was like a heavy metal song. It was crazy. It was a pretty, a little creepy. Well, kind of anyway. But they had a robotic one of him too. But that went pretty quick. That was nearer towards the end of the life cycle for He-Man toys. But, uh, you know, he has a bunch of legs. You can do whatever you want to with the legs or the arms or whatever in his heads. The idea was that he could disassemble himself and squeeze himself in his spot and creep people out. And he could be two people at once and blah, blah, blah. It was kind of crazy. So there's the evil horde. Also, there was this thing. When the Rock-On characters came out, like I was talking, telling you, uh, they had this slime. Now, it... Other things like Ghostbuster toys and other things, they, they had ectoplasm slime and other, other toys had this too. But I think He-Man was one of the first. This was the topper for the slime. I don't have the slime anymore. It smelled like crap and my mom threw it away. But it was like a, a jar of slime and this was on the top of it. And it was like this slimy goop stuff. And the idea was you were going to take this, this back part of the skull cap off of this, pour the slime in here trap a guy in here with this claw that would come up and uh, then pour this out. And it was kind of creepy how this thing came down. It was like like a dino head or something like that. And it would spew out all that slime all over the character. And the slime was meant to... You, they told you not to use it with Moss Man and not to use it with Grizzlor um, and a couple of the other characters because they had hair on them or whatever and that would mess up their hair but all the other figures were plastic pretty much so they said that you could slime any character that you wanted to and i did it a couple times don't worry i cleaned off all the slime uh, i cleaned off the slime off of this too it left a white crust and the slime not very last very long you had to pretty much put it back in its jar right away and even then it would lose its freshness 
now we are on to the dinosaurs. That's what some of you have been waiting for, I guess. Because these were kind of more rare. They had this guy, a Triceratops. They always had that in cartoons and in uh, legends and in fantasies and stuff like that. The T-Rex, which two fingers. If they don't have two fingers, then they're not T-Rexes. Um, fighting against the Triceratops. They'd be much larger if they were to scale. But this is fantasy world anyway, and I guess it shouldn't really matter too much about this. But um, according to evolutionary science, which is false, but we're not going to get into that here. Uh, <laughs> this lived in the Jurassic period, and this lived in the Cretaceous period. So they never fought each other. Yet all legends seem to suggest, um, and all all fantasies and, and fanboy dreams of... of um, of uh, dinosaur battles have always pitted the T-Rex versus the Triceratops. I, I've always noticed that. But uh, anyway, this was King Hiss's steed. You could sit a character inside of here and there was this lever that you could pull. And when you pulled it, it pushed out this thing from its belly, which was this. And let me put the camera down here for a moment. Um, basically, you would wind it up, kind of like you would wind up a... Um, uh, it doesn't look like it's working anymore. Wow, I guess the spring broke in it. I thought it was still working, but I guess not. But anyway, uh, there was a spring in here that would make this thing go like a crazy man across the floor when it flew out of the T-Rex's belly. It was strong enough and fast enough that it would knock down a figure pretty easy. So if there was a figure right in front of the T-Rex, he'd bite his head off and then pull the lever and knock it over with this. Now the seat does fall into the T-Rex, and also the T-Rex had this big gun on him, but the part that attaches here got broken off inside the hole that it's supposed to go into. It still attaches somewhat, but you just have to be really careful because it comes right back out. Uh, you may be able to dig out that piece and it would fit in there better, or you may not want to mess with it because it might break it further. But, yeah, no, it just fell right off. Uh, if you saw earlier in the video, it was on there. It was attached. It has a hard time standing up, too. Its snap jaw still works. It's not scratched up too bad in it. You know, I don't know if you noticed this, but there's, like, little robotic pieces on these dinosaurs. Um, this was before Dino Riders come out, came out, but maybe some people had the same idea. This has guns that can come off of its horns. You can sit a guy in here, but it would be very uncomfortable. Um, they can straddle them pretty big, pretty well, but they made the um, they made them not to scale so that they could sit in there and sit on them. Um, <clears throat> this has jets on its back. It's a it's kind of like a pterodactyl, um, and it has a chomping mouth thing. It's not spring loaded or anything. And in fact, I think I've yeah, it comes off. So you got to be careful with that. But it's not broken or anything. It's just really loose. Uh, let me get it back on here. That snaps back on. And he had... But he did have spring-loaded claws. So he could grab a guy and... Fly away with him. And drop him off. Oh. And uh, the wings... They reattach and deattach. So be careful. And uh, there's like... It seemed to be like turbine engines under the claws of the wings. Um, and those are detachable too. So there's the dinosaurs. There's the Hordak Lair. There's the rest of the bad guys. There's Snake Mountain. There's Castle Grayskull, the good guys. All that together. I might make another video later on to explain some other stuff further. Um, off the top of my head, glaring omissions would be Faker. Uh, and when I say omissions, I mean I don't have them. And... Sorry, they're not a part of this collection, but I don't have them. Uh, Faker, he was like the purple He-Man. I don't have Prince Adam. I don't have King Randor. I don't have the Queen. I don't have the Sorceress. I don't have the original He-Man or the original Skeletor, but I have other variants of He-Man and Skeletor. And I don't have Flying Fist He-Man. And there was another, um, another uh, type of Skeletor. I forgot what he was, but he was kind of lame, so I didn't get him. Um, and then there was uh, um, the robotic Moduluk. I don't have him. 
I don't have the other two King Hiss men, which were uh, a rattlesnake guy with his tongue and, the, and another guy with his head that popped out. Um, I talked about before with Rio Grande around the same time they had, they had a black guy that came out. It was, uh, I'm not trying to be racist or anything like that. It's just none of these characters were black. And the only other one that was any kind of recognizable ethnicity was Jitsu, and that was, he was an Asian guy. But there was a black guy that they brought out, a black hero. Uh, I forgot what he did. Uh, I want to say he had this big robotic arm. I could be completely wrong about that. I only saw him once in the store, and I didn't get him because I got real blast, and I got this elephant guy. I told you about the elephant guy. He had a snout that sprayed, but the snout broke off as soon as I freaking opened the package. So I... My mom took that back to the store. Um, I wish I kind of kept him. Like I said, I think there was two other, one or two other rock guys. One guy I think was purple, and the other guy was gray. I had the gray one, but he's bro he he was broken and he's gone now. Um, as far as vehicles go, uh, there might have been another. Oh yeah, the the roadster guy, the guy with the wheel on his chest. I don't have him either. Sorry to say. Um, but those are the glaring omissions. As far as the vehicles go, there was a...